man. How are you? Hey, Murad. Good. Good. How are you? Murad, it's really I really want to thank you again. Um, you know that you are you know giving up your time on Saturday to be with us, and it's awesome to do this uh, online. Uh, you know, Instagram joint live streaming with you. Um, and and first of all, thank you again for that. My pleasure, Ihan. I mean, uh, as um, people might not know, I uh, had the president of the Middle Eastern Turk Society for the NYPD. And one of the main purposes for establishing this organization is to inform our community, keep them apprised, and especially in cases like this, something that we've never experienced nor imagined to have to go through something like that. Uh, so I really, really thank you uh, for allowing me, giving me the voice to reach out to the members of the community, your friends, your family, our community, my community, in order to speak to them. Thank you so much. And Murad, since you uh, right away started talking about the association part. I want to say a couple words about that and about you, honestly. Uh, first of all, um, since this crisis started, right, uh, I believe it's three weeks, I have been bothering you a lot. And, and I've been, you know, I, I want to first of all thank you for that. And the reason I was bothering was to find out what will happen, what's going to happen. Uh, because I knew it was going to matter to us, matter to people, matter to community about what's waiting, you know, in front of us. And, and honestly, The information I was getting from you, I was passing to the people, to our customer, to our followers, uh, and and because of that, I could say that um, you, yes, you're part of the New York Police Department. You, you know, you're an officer, you're a member, and you also have been giving your own time to work for the community, and that you have been part of and the president of the uh, Middle Eastern. Uh, Middle East and Turkey Society Association, which is an association right brings together all those uh, NYPD police officers from different regions, uh, countries, and and they they try their best to help the communities in New York, and we really uh, appreciate the hard work that you, your team, your uh, board, and also members of your association, and of course NYPD members put towards this. And honestly, I want to thank for all that help that you all. You, you guys are providing. And thank you for this opportunity right now because I want to be able to uh, share with our followers uh, the words that you're going to say uh, about this current you know, issues going on. If you can explain us a little bit, you know, what you see happening right now with this crisis, you know, with this virus crisis. If you tell us the way you see it, the way from your perspective. Uh, and so I would like to, and our followers would like to hear about that. Yeah, I mean... Like I said before, what's happening right now is something that we never even imagined of happening. I mean, think about it. There's nobody in the streets. There shouldn't be anybody in the street. You know, as per our advisor, the president, our governor, our mayor, you know, uh, to, people need to quarantine. They need to stay isolated. Who would have thought of such a thing? The, the, you know, one of the richest countries in the, United, in the world, such as the United States, you know, people fighting over uh, to toilet paper or how much food they could get. And, you know, that enters a state of natural panic and natural worry. How can I provide for my family? How could I survive this? And, you know, people start thinking worst case scenarios and it induces panic into our lives and puts us into a very unpleasant atmosphere, right? Uh, right. From a, psychologically. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So then even if you get something as a fever, you think in the worst case scenario and a similar reaction is quite analogous to people going out to the stores and buying toilet paper and running, buying a million things. However, right now what I see is the overcrowded hospitals. When people go to hospitals, one thing people have to know, they are not going to say, oh my God, you have Corona, let's come in and put you in a breathalyzer right away and we're going to fix you up right now. What's happening at the hospital, if you are not experiencing like breathing issues, stuff like that, you pretty much give them provided vitamin C, you know, a lot of liquid, medicine to bring down your temperature, right? That is what the hospital is providing. But the, what do you call it? The large amount of people going into the hospital, clogging up the system for what seems like flu-like symptoms, whether it's cough, it's a fever, that is not the right thing to possibly do unless you are experiencing trouble breathing, so on and so forth. Or you have another illness that puts you at some sort of medical vulnerability. If um, 
you have asthma, if you're diabetic, if you have heart problems, you know, then then you should be more worried with those symptoms and seek medical advisor, right? However, we, we you don't need to go to the hospital after experiencing a single symptom because you might not have that virus. And, and just the system's getting clogged up. And I saw a uh, video there on YouTube and explained it very well. You know, you put a hole in a water bottle and you put a decent amount of water, everything's going to flow. But when you start over flooding it, there's, there's not a, the water's going to stop flowing. They bounce out everywhere. Wow. So now that's what's happening is that people are reacting in a way, I got to run to the hospital. I, I tested positive. No, what you should do is when you test positive, you should ask yourself the following questions. Who have I been around since I tested? What have I done? Where have I gone? Who did I come in contact with? Right? Who else is possible at risk? And inform them where um, that they should also go get tested to be in contact with you. Right? Uh, and isolate yourself. Do not go outside. Do not go in contact with people. And not just if you test positive, but also everybody should really be living in isolation. Like, these aren't normal times that we're currently living in. And I know this great nation has spoiled us and made us feel as if we could have anything at any time. However, right now is not normal times. Right now is a time to stay indoors. Right now is a time to isolate yourself. You got to, you know, stay home. Don't go in contact with people. Constantly drink fluids. Constantly wash your hands. Constantly be more careful and more vigilant of how you interact with people. Do not shake people's hands. I know in our culture, what do you mean you don't want to shake my hand? Is it disrespectful? No, I'm looking out for you, right? It's, it's our culture. We always, oh, I got to shake hands, hug, so on and so forth. But that is not what we have to do right now. We have to live a life that we never lived before. This is not something that happens. It's one, it happens once in a blue moon and then we got to um, look back at it and say, you know, this is, uh, this is what we did. This is what we did right. This is what we did wrong. Um, but we have to be more careful how we conduct ourselves. Don't go out. And don't go out late at night because after 8 o'clock at night, they've been told to stay out for two reasons. One, what, unless you have an emergency, you shouldn't really go out. And two, God forbid, your car breaks down, you're by yourself. There's not going to be anybody to really help you aside from 911, right? Uh, or That's a good point. Insurance or That's something. Good point. You know, you're not going to have that vigilant from the community and people out there, God forbid, something happens, you fall, you this, that. Mm. There, there are not many people out there, you know. Uh, you got to eliminate those risks. I know it's not an easy way of living, and I know it's not a normal way of living. However, this is what we have to do in order to get over this pandemic. We got to isolate ourselves. We got to maintain our health, be vigilant of what's going on in our body, and got to know, you know, this is not normal. I mean, I can tell Murat, those are awesome, actually, uh, points and recommendations, advices. Uh, to people uh, to make sure that they do that. And actually, uh, I was just mentioning earlier to, uh, another live streaming in which you just say about handshake and about the cultural issues that we, we can face. Um, there was a, you know, one of the one of the guy actually from Jersey, uh, he's one of the patient or person who recover from the viruses. He says two weeks ago, he just shake his friend's hands. That was it. And he got it from him. Uh, because he had some, the guy was a little sick. He said the only thing he did was handshake. And so he had to battle with this. He had to spend, even though he's healthy, not older person, had to be in the hospital a week actually to get over from this, you know, uh, uh, viruses. And he was lucky to actually get over with it. Uh, this is why I think advises that you, the points you were making very important. And I hope everyone follows those so like just want to add on to your handshake thing we all think of it as just i'm extending my hand to shake your hands but when we when we cough naturally <laughs> right and yeah now i go shake your hand 20 minutes later if i didn't wash my hand guess what i i have a positive i could pass 
the virus, virus view if, if yeah. I'm positive, right? Yeah. And this yeah. just isn't with Corona. This is with it's many different. other many other viruses, right? So this needs to be a change in our uh, culture and how we function. Honestly, this is going to be an eye opener. I think I believe there are going to be a lot of things we take away from this that are going to be uh, moving forward on. I, I don't think after being in isolation and people getting quarantined and people not in the offices and people not going to work and taking all these precautionary measures, I think, I truly think that some of them will be everlasting and it's going to change the way we operate and uh, be more mindful for us. I 100% agree with you. And, and I want to say one more thing. <clears throat> it's about viruses. Viruses, we're saying... They don't choose people. They don't discriminate. They just, yeah. they don't say the person is poor or rich or older or younger or, you know, white or colored. They're not yeah. looking for any discrimination. Uh, the viruses don't do that. Similar to the NYPD. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's the point I was coming yeah. now. But I know just like doctors, nurses, your health care people, also NYPD people, police officers, they are in front run. They have to be out there time yeah. to time. Uh, and, and they are risking, you know, their life and uh, they're, they're facing with this. We heard, uh, I believe it was over 100 NYPD members got affected with this. Could you explain a little bit about what's going on? With I that? mean, t today we lost the NYPD officer to the coronavirus. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Wow, uh, a detective, was. 23 years in the job. We lost a total of three people from the NYPD in total. Wow. Um, who we lost to this uh, coronavirus. Um, that being said, like you said, this virus does not discriminate towards anybody. And you have to be mindful and careful of what you do because your actions don't just affect you, right? Like if I'm driving my car and I run a red light, I get pulled over, I'm getting a ticket, right? It's not the person next to me. With this virus, this is I go out, yeah. I see you, I shake your hand, you get it. You go home, you get it. I come back. So it just spreads rapidly, and we have to be very careful how we interact with people and wash our hands, drink water. You know, you know, I'm not a medical professional, but from what I've heard, you know, the water pushes down the virus to the stomach where the acid in your stomach burns it down, and that's why it's a lot of drinking water. Vitamin C will greatly help with combating this um Virus, right? Uh, the NYPD is not immune to it. You know, there are over three thousand officers out sick right now from uh, the coronavirus. Um, so there's nobody who's immune to getting this virus, and uh, it's sad. But you know, this is what the world we live in. This is what we have to deal with. And hundred percent, I also really agree with the point you made about. This is going to change some cultural, you know, habits or, or things that we know we have been doing. Uh, I think this is really going to change. I also see the people, the way they interact, that they interact maybe more now from, you know, online ways of doing things, such yeah. as now what we're doing, right? We're doing, yeah. I can see that I'm, I feel like you're next to each other, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same room. And, and people, I believe, start to take more and more towards that. Uh, to minimize in-person contacts, even after this virus. 100% uh, agree with that. Uh, I hope that, you know, uh, also those officers get gets well quickly and then, uh, and then so they can get back to their jobs and protecting us. Um, uh, what else I could say? I mean, is, is I there... Mean, a there's one more thing we'd like Please. to mention, right? Please. Like, we got to remember the positive. So we're a few... We're about 10 days into this... Uh, Isolate. So by next week, there should be a lot of people coming out of isolation who have beat this virus, right? Yeah. So, like, you have hundreds of people around the country that are coming over that, that gap, right? That wave. They're coming over that wave. They're going to go back into society, and they no longer have that virus, right? And we need to support those people because we don't want to reinfect them, if it's possible or not, right? They, we don't want them to be infected again. There's a lot we don't know about this virus. People say, oh, you get infected again. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Why take that risk, right? Because that wave of people is going to have to come back in and backfill many jobs, not just law enforcement, 
but many jobs that are out there, essential individuals that are working. And speaking of that, I want to thank all our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, firefighters, EMTs, law enforcement personnel that are out there working and really risking, you know, contamination and so on and so forth, helping out the community day in and day out without even taking a second thought about it. And uh, definitely, I want to say one more thing about that. You, you know, you write about what is known, what is really fact, what is all the scientific, fa scientific fact is or not. Like they would keep saying before, oh, when the summer comes with heat, these viruses will go away. It turns out now it wasn't true. So the things are, I think what we need to do about that part, which you also mentioned, we have to really follow uh, scientists and also doctors, uh, the health people to say really what really this virus is and what we are facing. Like you said, we really don't know what we are facing sometimes and this could change and affect it. Uh, I guess, like you say, this is going to change some habits. Us to be at home, to be more isolated as much as possible, even in the coming months, to be yeah. make sure we are safe. Um, I hope that hopefully this will, you know, go over uh, and and we can, you know, go back to our life very soon. Um, since I mean, uh, one more thing that I, I I know, you know, we I can most likely uh, recover most of the parts that you know was or followers wanted to know. Um, there's just one question I wanted to ask because time to time our followers, they really like that. They ask, they say, how can I become a police officer? You know, they, you know, people, you know, young people, generation, yeah. they like to do that. And, and I would like to first ask the question about that. First of all, if you can <clears throat> briefly say like how, you know, if someone, you know, wanted to become a police officer or to, for the NYPD, yeah, what are I the mean, steps they need to take to, to, to be able to do that? The number one step is to apply online, right? And you don't have to be a police officer right away. There are auxiliary, the volunteer. There are police cadets who throughout college work in the police department administrative duties. There are traffic agents. There, so there are many, and there are police officers, right? And there are many school safety officers. There are many jobs available uh, that provide great benefits and they, uh, you know, give you that experience. And that time carries over to if you decide to remain in law enforcement and go into the NYPD, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so it's a it's a great first step. I would definitely go online, uh, go to the website, and uh, look look on there. You know. That sounds good. Second question we get from our followers usually, you know, like foreigners, uh, they could be sometimes even from overseas, uh, mm -hmm. and then or here they're in a student visa or they're in work visas. Do you know anything about if, uh, how can someone, even if they're not even U.S. citizen, will it be possible to become a post officer in MIPD? Or if, if it's not, maybe there are other type of things that you yeah. were just mentioning will be possible yeah. for them. So uh, I believe a traffic safety officer, a traffic officer, you okay. don't need to be a citizenship. Okay. You could just have a green card. Okay. Uh, as a police officer, you need to be a citizen. Okay. And, and speaking on that part, I've been hearing something that really bothered me. People were scared to call 911 because they thought that they're going to inquire about citizenship or if they're going to go to a hospital, they're going to inquire about citizenship. And so we don't enforce that. You know, like we, we, I want to make this clear to all the followers. When you call 911, it doesn't matter if you're a citizen of the U.S. or not a citizen of the U.S. We do not enforce uh, Immigration, yeah. right? Basically, so, they can they can feel protected when they yep, need help. Yep, they can yep. comfortably ask, yep. you know, nine one one help and police officers exactly. help without worrying about their status. Exactly, exactly. 100%. Thank you so exactly. much for that point. You know what? You actually made an awesome point there, Murat, because two weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, when this thing, you know, uh, started, the crisis thing started becoming more serious and serious. And there were talks actually on, on radio shows and then he was saying people are worried, like some aliens, foreigners who they don't have studies, they were like, okay, what will happen to us if we wanted to get a test? If you go yeah. to the test, will ICE come and deport us, remove yeah. us? So yeah. that conversation took to the another level where ICE made a point saying they're not going to be deporting people right now due to this you know, uh, virus crisis going on. But the, the idea here is, yes, with health issues, with safety issues, um, people don't have to worry about their legal status. They just need the protection and they could ask that. 
uh, and you and NYPD, we are really pr- proud of you guys uh, and then the amount of help and then of course, you know, the things that you guys do for us. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, that's why we're here, you know. Like, uh, you know, the famous saying goes, you know, we could, we could do so much f- for our community, but we could do so much more with our community. And uh, that's something that, you know, the NYPD, all members of the Middle East Turkish Society definitely lead by and uh, a model that we believe in, right? Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be out here giving a message. You need information, but it's due to your uh, connectivity and your people, your followers. I'm able to spread out this message to people, and we're here to help. And my the more members of the NYPD is an extremely diverse group, extremely well-talented people. I'm lucky to have them and be surrounded by them. Um, a phenomenal bunch of people that will have. If I don't know something, I'll go to them. They don't know something, go to me. And we could also find out whatever you need um, concerning the community. What are the concerns? What What are the fears? And we could always come back to it and answer if we don't have it right then and there. Hundred percent, Murad. Thank you so much for your time and for your kind, you know, words and directions, advices. Um, we'll be in touch. Um, and if there's anything else needed, another life needs to be done. Uh, I'll ask again, and we do it one more time. Uh, hopefully, we get these days over soon. And thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. No problem. Talk to thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.